This is it, we're finally here. I'm about to beat the world record of Minecraft. Let's go. Let's go. Wait, what? Pause. In this video, me and my friend try to speedrun Minecraft, except the goal of the game is to build a hog on farm, not kill the Ender Dragon. Will we be able to build it? I guess you'll have to wait to find out. Make sure to sub and like you enjoy. Really helps out the YouTube algorithm. And I hope you guys enjoy the run. All right, so of course, since we were using filtered seeds, we're filtering for village seeds. So we spawn in a desert village and I'm running over to get some wood while Gage is gathering up some beds in case we need to blow up some extra blocks before going on the roof to build the farm. And basically I'm gathering wood and I'm gonna go get some stone. And while I do these beginning things, I guess I should explain the overall strategy to this. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to build this hogwood farm on the roof of the nether. Tutorials down below, as I already probably mentioned in the intro, which I'll record after this. But basically there's the strategy we kind of figured out is we spawn in this village. Uh, one of us goes to the village, one of us gets tools. This was actually the first time I'd gotten tools in any run we had done. But obviously it's not too hard just to gather up some cobblestone, nor is it too hard just to go into the village and kill everything and whatnot. So while Gage gets some beds and explores the ruined portal, gathers up some loot from the village chest, gets food. I'm going in here and getting cobblestone. So our overall strategy for this run is as after we finish these preliminary tasks, Gage is actually going to enter the nether and he's going to go to a bastion, which since it's a filter seed, typically we get one pretty close to our nether spawn. And he's going to be trading for some ender pearls there so we can get on the roof of the nether easily, as well as so we can travel a little bit quicker. He's also going to take note of where some important biomes are. So we need a crimson forest and a warp forest preferably so we can get plenty of the crimson or warp fungi once we're in there. So that's definitely yeah, what we got to do. And then we both meet up after while he's doing that, I'm mining iron. I'm also going to go into the nether and mine some wood. And as you've seen a little bit, we actually get a really nice time save from one of the structures he finds. If you actually look over just ahead, we see the temple. and That's where Gage is actually heading off to now. So we get to blow up the wood in the nether, which is a huge time save. Fantastic time save. And now I'm going to head back over to the village. I'm actually checking for some food uh, because we actually haven't gotten any food yet. I think... As we're about to see, we actually got kind of unlucky and no hay bales generated with this village. So we're going to have to kill some animals. A lot of runs died due to lack of food and low health and us just getting kind of creamed by nether mobs. Um, you know, due to the fact that this does have to take place in a crimson forest, like, yeah, unfortunately, that's kind of what has to happen is we're going to have to deal with hoglins permanently just because we're going to be in that biome. And as I go up, I'm going to kill the golem real quick, hoping for some iron. Gage actually gets about 9 iron, I think, in the Desert Temple, which is actually really, really good. And that sets us up well for the run. It lets him get a pick, as well as the bucket and flint and steel. And I also get to get a pick as well. So, overall fantastic. I get an additional 5 iron, which is also perfect RNG right there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go meet up with Gage, and I'm actually going to have to go start mining. So, a big part of this run, and one of the huge things that kind of you know, determine how good of it was, was the cave RNG. Like, can I find a good cave to mine iron? Because we do need 45 iron and about 20 coal uh, to complete the farm. Now, uh, the coal for smelting as well as for torches, and then we need the iron for the nine hoppers we have to put in the farm. And that definitely could have been less, but, you know, I wanted the challenge, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So real quick, I make the iron pickaxe, and I go ahead, you know, break my crafting table, and I go and mine this gold block, and I'll give this to Gage so we can trade with some piglins if needed. Um, or I can, because I'll definitely be in a crimson forest, uh, mining wood and whatnot later on. And real quick, I take a look for the chest. I do notice it's enterable, but he actually discovered a lava pool underneath the desert temple and was already getting set up there. Don't find the chest, so I decide, screw it, and let's go exchange some stuff. As you can see in the top left, Gage is actually killing animals right now to get us some food. I'm heading over to him, we're about to exchange materials, and I can go under. So, thankfully we luck out of pretty decent cave and we already have some excess iron too which is really nice um so he gives me some food right here i give him the iron and i ask if he needs to pick he doesn't so i kind of kind of send it fall in this water of course minor time losses there's definitely a lot of time loss in this run you know this was you know only our second completed run you know, it's kind of funny actually like unfortunately uh we did a really good run that was a little bit slower than this but also sub 30 and we realized at the very end we built the farm in the wrong biome. So therefore, after a completed run, we were super hype. We've been speedrunning for hours and we we're like, oh, we built in the wrong biome. So now I enter into the cave and essentially now for the next few minutes, I just have to mine some coal and iron. So as I mine this coal and iron, 
find some coal right here. Very, very nice. Um, there'll definitely be a little bit more action in just a few minutes, but we go on our way. I get the coal. Mining coal. I think I actually get all the coal I need in this one vein, which is really, really cool. Uh, typically, I have to mine two veins, but we mine some coal right here. And my initial calculations, I was originally in our first runs. We actually did a run we completed at just over 30 minutes, which was super good RNG. We got ridiculous bastion RNG as well as I think we had really good uh, biomes and whatnot. And with that, we, I was mining way too much coal, and I kind of realized we only needed about a stack, or just under a stack of torches, and didn't need like three stacks of torches for this thing. So we went from there. As you can see, I'm going to start getting my first iron, and a little trick I picked up on that easily keep track of it is I always, after I mine my first vein, make sure I just keep it in the hotbar, uh, keep track of how much iron I have at all times. So I'm about seven, so I definitely need quite a bit more. So the goal, once again, is 45. Come down in here, I see there's like four or five mobs. I see they're not chasing me. We are in easy mode, which is nice. Then they are chasing me. So Creeper explodes, kills one of the skeletons. I kill the skeleton with my pick. I'm about to die, and I kind of just yeet out of there, and I end up dying from the skeleton. That is the first time loss. Uh, in this, there's definitely a lot of time losses. A sub-25 is definitely possible of our farm. I think you could build a smaller farm, and it'd be a lot easier. We were building a pretty fast farm. Uh, it's my design that gets around 5,000 per hour, which in a half hour, it's not bad at all. But thankfully, spawn is very, very close, and I run over and can easily send it back into this cave. And of course, there's like a chicken jockey right there. And then I end up going the wrong way, which is my first mistake. So the rest I go the wrong way. Thankfully, the chicken jockeys are pretty slow, so I don't take too much damage. And I kind of just run past that creeper, take a bit of damage, run down this cave, and I end up finding all of my goods right here and I noticed the skeleton is still there so I kind of just run get all my stuff and just yeah run out of there and as you can see Gage just got the hot stuff advancement so he is about to enter the nether and start trading of bastions fortunately his computer is not good enough so I can't record his perspective as well but we can kind of see what he's doing based on his achievements and eventually we'll meet up and build the farm together we actually meet up to gather resources about 10 minutes into the run so I resume iron mining after that quick time save for about 12, so about a quarter of the way there. I actually missed some iron on the ground right there. Um, but I come up to this cave and find some more and yeah, start mining it. Yeah, essentially I kind of just emptied this cave out of all of the iron. Yeah, I got as much as I could and we kind of just sent it from there. So as you can see, another vein, another vein down. So one of the biggest tips I kind of picked up on this run is uh, you got to make sure you actually smelt your iron. Uh, we actually almost, if we hadn't had suits furnaces, I think this run would have been about a minute or two slower. So it's very, very important to make sure you take your materials. Also, inventory management is super important. The amount of times I accidentally threw some stuff out in, our, in a completed run was super unfortunate. That just kind of causes time loss. Sometimes we had a portal that get back to the overworld, but other times we didn't. And when we didn't, like, yeah, once you're up on the top of the nether, you're kind of stuck there and you better have all the materials you need. And that actually happens in this run, which does cause a minor, minor time loss, unfortunately. But as you can see, we're racking up the iron. This is a very, very good cave. We're on very good iron pace right now. We're only about eight minutes in, and the fact that I already have almost enough iron is great. Typically for a good run, we wanted all the iron by about 10 minutes. So we're going to probably be right around that pace for this. So I get some last iron. I'm running out. I kind of look in a little bit more of these cave sections come over here and realize I hadn't explored this section yet. Uh, block off the water. I'm scrolling. I'm definitely hotkeys is the way to go. I kind of realized my scroller has not been working lately, unfortunately. I come down here, break that block, and I come up on the last bits of iron we're going to need. So right here, I see a zombie spawner. I just dip out of there, especially with the baby zombie. wasn't worth it. And I come up this cave, find another patch of iron that's going to take us up to about 44. 44 iron so I'm like okay I grab some more iron right here and I'm like okay we are ready to go and I'm gonna go up to the nether roof now and go back to the nether I have no idea really where I am and I start mining up and unfortunately as you could tell by the train there were a lot of savanna plateaus around and unfortunately for me I was in one of them so I actually had to yeah build up and I was under a mountain so that kind of was some time loss here Thankfully, though, we have the TNT. I think the biggest time losses is just making sure you don't die in the nether. Uh, we are shooting at this point. We're about 
10 minutes in on the run. We want to be on top of the nether ceiling in 10 minutes um, just to build the farm. On our first uh, 30 flat run, we were on the nether ceiling around 19 minutes, and we finished the farm at like just over 30. But we had a lot of time loss, so we knew even though I was a little bit behind on the iron and going into the nether, and later on we were a little bit behind getting on the roof, we knew we could save time because in that first run, we actually forgot our lava bucket that killed the hoglins. So Gage had to go through the portal and actually get the materials to craft campfires, so I built the whole farm by myself for the most part. Whereas in this one, we could actually build it together and, you know, cram out the farm in just a few minutes versus before I had to build the whole thing by myself and it took twice as long. I come up and now I'm grabbing dirt. You might be wondering why, and that's actually to get some blocks so we can actually place our uh, blue mushrooms on top of them. So as you guys know, the blue nilium mushrooms can only be placed on these like bio blocks, so like dirt, grass, uh, nilium. And obviously nilium requires silk touch, so I grab dirt, very easy of a shovel. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go over and start sending it to the desert temple. And I quickly eat an apple to conserve my steak for healing. Because unfortunately the nether spawn is crimson forest, which is what we need. We do need that, but yeah, it's quite dangerous because hoglins and piglins and whatnot. I know I don't even have a gold piece yet, which is kind of unfortunate. So I come over here. I'm like, where is the portal dude? Like, I have no idea where it is. He's like, run around it. So I run around. I'm like, oh, there's the entrance. And I knew it was in a ravine. So I kind of just easily kind of take some damage. He had to put a bed there to, for me to kind of help myself not. I sleep to set my spawn real quick. And on I go into the nether immediately. We're at about 11 minutes, 11.30 into the run, just under. And instantaneously, I make another, gonna go make another crafting table. Didn't see I had one. I'm not good at the speed running thing. Uh, I need to like fix my scroller as well. As you can see, that scrolling was disgusting. But I craft some gold boots because I know I'll be on the Crimson Forest. Gage actually just dies and didn't set a spawn, unfortunately. But as you can see to the top, we can see the Bastion up there. That's where Gage was, in fact, trading, trying to get us some Ender Pearls, but thankfully we are good to go. So I come up here, and we got some time, so I'm going to try to wait for the TNT from Gage so I can get the wood a lot easier um, and kind of explore. One of the other major things in this run that we didn't consider is that the blue Nilium mushroom things, the blue mushrooms are spawned extremely rarely in the Crimson Forest, so you really need to make sure you have enough, uh, what you going to call it, uh, you need to make sure you have enough of those. You need about 20 of them at a minimum. So it's really, really much better if you can find the Warp Forest. We found that the best spawn for sure is a Warp Forest Crimson Forest mix. Just because we can get access to a Warp, warp Forest to get the materials we need. And then we can actually, you know, go on top of the farm and build it in the Crimson Forest. You know, also harvesting in the Warp Forest is also a lot safer since only Ender would spawn there. And instantaneously, after the piglins don't really work out, I just start chopping some wood since I don't have the TNT yet. I know we'll need a lot of wood. We need about a stack just for uh, the chests and hoppers and whatnot, as well as trapdoors and signs and ladders to make our AFK spot. So, yeah, overall, we definitely need a lot of wood. So, as of right now, I'm kind of running around looking a bit for some blue mushrooms, as well as just, you know, chopping the occasional tree, waiting for that TNT. We also need quite a lot of blocks. We need about four and a half stacks of blocks, which can be slabs, which is important to note, um, to build the farm. So there's a lot of things to gather, and that's kind of all of my job, which Gage tries to survive the Bastion, since he does speedrun, but he's still learning Bastion strats, so we're both not the best of that, and, you know, PvE is hard. Bastions are super dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Thankfully, we're on 1.16.1, though, so there are no brutes, which would suck. And as you can see, Gage is getting absolutely chased by these guys. I'm gonna go in and grab his stuff, but then he says, oh, he can come back. They stop getting mad at him. And I actually follow him down to grab that TNT. So we go down into the Bastion. He throws me the TNT. I have to spit out some stuff. I end up spitting out some cobble, which was actually a huge mistake. This is the one mistake I made in terms of materials. That was my, that was gonna be my furnace. So unfortunately I don't have a furnace anymore is the big thing. Um, I accidentally just got rid of that. So Gage can see the flint and steel. I have the TNT, but I left the cobble behind, which will bite us later. And actually, we probably would have gone a little bit quicker had we saved it. So I get my wood in my inventory so I can slot up. He throws me a few pearls, I think. Um, so I can have them for later just in case he dies. So he gives me about three of them. And at this point, we can actually go on top. 
then go back to TNT mining some of these trees as well as using it to get blocks. So immediately I kind of get organized, get ready to go. Uh, one big blunder is I don't have my axe in my inventory, which is a huge, huge mistake. And part of this run that kind of sucks is I'm running out of food, as you can see. The food almost deleted this run, to be honest, um, which is very, very unfortunate. So that was that was unfortunately yeah, one of the reasons why I couldn't heal. Gage got Ender Pearl, so he's also coming with me to help. So at this point, I grab some uh, diorite as I click my torches over and over again incorrectly. And I slide this way, and I can jump down there, taking more damage. I'm very, very low right now. Don't have a lot of food. And we're just trying to try to find some places to TNT mine. So first thing I do is I light that off, and I get away from it. And then, yeah, this is how we TNT mine. So I do one at the base, and then typically what I'll do is I'll gather up all the blocks, including the nether rack, which is very important. And I use the nether rack to, yeah, place another, yeah, TNT down. As you can see, my scrolling is really, really hurting me right now. And then I can blow another one up. As you can see right there, and we get a ton more wood. As you can see, I almost got nearly a stack just from doing all that stuff, as well as a ton, I mean, a ton of nether rack, which is fantastic. So now at this point, um, we're kind of looking around. Gage actually found the warp forest. This is actually a pretty good nether since we have access to one of those. That means we can get plenty of the warp nilium fungi things. And I found another big tree. If you're doing this, you really want to find these big thick trees like that because you're just going to get more bang for your buck. You can get nearly a stack of wood per blast, which is fantastic. As you can see, we're already over a stack. So I'll be able to use some of this for building blocks. And I actually fall down. That was a hole broken by the TNT. So there's our second time loss right there. So I come back, I go into the nether, and I'm like, okay, I died. Um, this could be it. I mean, we're sitting at 16 minutes, 45 seconds right now. I don't even have all the wood yet and building blocks we need. I'm like, okay, we gotta move quick. We got about 13 minutes until run over. So I run up here and come up. I'm running, just running for my life back to my stuff. Cause I know at this point that like, we are gonna be on on the edge of like sub 30 like it's gonna be very very close i'm trying to avoid the piglins because i don't have my gold boots anymore i find the diary thankfully thankfully i'm getting better at you know tracking my cords in the nether which is definitely definitely a good idea so i come up here i realize i'm like okay where did i fall I'm like oh it blasted so actually the tnt blew a hole and i'm like i don't know if i can survive um i don't know what to do i'm kind of debating with gauge as well how i'm going to get down there I try to break a block. I actually break a couple blocks. I actually go ahead and I try to place some like of these vines here to kind of help break my fall. And I end up just falling. I get down the two hearts. But thankfully, I kind of survived. And, you know, I see all these piglins around. They're kind of getting mad at me. I'm like, okay, I cannot. I cannot get killed by these guys. Like, I will be screwed if I do. So I kind of run this way. I kind of realize, okay, I can go that way. I see they're kind of like spread out now and I can run and get the rest of my stuff because I know I need everything from there. All that stuff is very critical. So I end up getting back here. I get all the wood. I get the beds. I get the flint and steel. And at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm good to go. I got the pearls back as well. Got the wood. I got the coal. I'm double checking what I have and don't have. Unfortunately, I still haven't caught that cobble mistake, which is, yeah, sucky. And at this point, I'm like, okay, um... I build back up and I'm kind of analyzing at this point, like, okay, are we good to go? Like how much wood do I have? And I think at this point I have a couple stacks. So we gotta kind of figure that out. And as you can see, we only have 10 minutes left for the run at this point. So we're gonna, yeah, try to figure that out, see what we can do and hopefully go on the nether roof at some point. At this point I'm like, okay, Gage, where am I? He's like, I see you, just dig up, I'm right above you. So I dig up, I'm like, dude, I'm really low. I'm on three hearts. He's like, okay, I'll be able to get some food. I just need to get some mushrooms and we're gonna be set on food. Food was a huge factor on this run. That almost killed the run many, many times. It gets down to a hair. A hair, I mean a hair of the food destroying this run. And you'll see why in just a little bit, so stay tuned. At this point, I'm like, okay, we have enough wood. Let's just get some blocks. So I start lighting TNT. I'm like, okay, pick up the blocks behind me. And I will light this TNT. So I just go around, light the TNT. Fortunately, I keep messing up my hockeys. I need to figure out my school. I think my mouse is old, so I probably think I'm get a new mouse, but... I go around, I'm like, okay, 
That's definitely enough blocks, so let's get going. We have, I have like four stacks of blocks at this point. I get rid of my beds because I know I won't need them at this point. I found that the beds, I tried bed mining some of the trees, and I, honestly it would destroy most of the wood in the fire, as well as when we're trying to get netherrack, so... Bed mining can be worth it when you're trying to find the hole up in the ceiling to find and break through, but overall, mining wood or blocks of the beds is not worth it. You won't get a lot out of it. Netherrack is okay, but definitely for wood, it's just not worth it. At this point, Gage starts to go get his lava bucket. At this point, I kind of realized, like, dude, I, I don't have cobble. And I'm like, we don't have cobble, like, we need to go to the Bastion. I'm like, I'm on three hearts, like, I will die if I go there. Because I don't have gold armor. So I tell him, okay, dude, you need to go there. I'm going to start digging up behind you. Um, we're kind of debating at this point. Of course, I bring myself down the two hearts by accident there. Because I'm being a doofus and have my flint and steel in my offhand. And I'm kind of just like, shoot, is this to run over? Like, we're over 20 minutes. We wanted to be in the nether ceiling before 20. Which is definitely possible, because we've actually done that before. So at this point, I'm just like, okay. I'm going to dig up. You go get some cobble. Get two furnaces, because we need... The double smelt the iron for sure. Typically one furnace was enough, but in this case with only about nine minutes left, it's gonna take quite a bit of time because we gotta smelt 45 iron from what we already have. So I start digging up while he go gets the furnaces, and thankfully though, the nether ceiling is very close. So at this point I can actually start looking around for an entry point, which actually is right here. So the way you can tell is if that block you're looking at on the ceiling is 127 in the Y value. That means that you're actually good to go on top. So what I do is I get some, uh, print some logs at this point, some planks, and I start throwing out some junk. And I actually craft them into some sticks, as you can see right here. I throw out some other miscellaneous junk, and I actually go ahead and make some ladders. And at that point, I am good to go. Have the nether rack. I'm like, dude, I need food. Like, I am gonna you know, screw myself if I don't get food. I don't have actually enough health to possibly you know, take the damage. So I start throwing out some items so he can throw me some food to me that I don't necessarily need. Gives me some mushrooms. Gives me a bowl. The red mushrooms actually fell in the hole, so I have to go down there and cycle out once again. I'm like, okay, thank God. He gave me one stew. I can actually craft another stew out of it from the materials he gave me. I'm like, okay, this is the food we have for the rest of the run. So I got two stew, and I heal up a little bit, and I'm actually good to go on the roof. He's already there, and we're looking for a crimson forest to make sure we can build the farm. And we start purling this way, because we're in the nether waste, and we realize we're actually going the wrong way. We're supposed to go north, so we turn left, head south actually, rather. I purl with my last purl to save some time. We're on the edge at this point. We're at 22, 23 minutes about, and we are basically going to be screwed if we don't hurry up. So I find it. I start getting a crafting table ready so I can start crafting up some stuff. He places down the furnaces. I go over there and immediately, immediately throw the iron in. This starts smelting. That's at this point our biggest uh, concern is that our iron won't be good enough. And he starts mapping out where the farm platform is going to go, which he did build a little too high, but it's not too big of a deal. So he maps it out. I break the blocks in the middle, and I'm going to start constructing the item collection while he starts mapping out the actual terrain. So I'm going ahead, I'm building the drop chute, he's building the platform, I think I just said terrain, meant platform, that they're going to spawn on. And essentially what I got to do is just kind of build this up, so this is the drop chute where the hoglins will fall down. At this point what I got to do is now craft up some trap doors, as well as some chests, as well as some signs. We need about 10 chests for the hoppers as well as one chest for the output, which I placed right there. At this point, I gotta craft up, as I just said, craft up trap doors, which we need eight of. I can accidentally craft 10, but it's fine. We have plenty of blocks. Uh, the TNT definitely gets you tons. You're not really ever crunched on wood or another rack or whatnot. So I quickly go ahead and yeah, place as many uh, trap doors in every single block. I realize I missed one. Based on how many ones I'd used, I place it in there and we're set. And now I go ahead and craft up my signs as well as ladders. And the reason why we need ladders is because technically the farm is not complete without going on top to an AFK position, because otherwise hoglins will not spawn. So that's part of the farm. Now, as you guys probably know, I probably mentioned this, this was inspired by Il Mango, And one thing he did do was build a portal to get back. 
We did do this actually in our 30 flat run, so it's certainly possible, but we did decide that, you know, if we don't get the obby for the sake of getting a fast time, we're just going to do it. Obviously, that'd be about 10 extra minutes, probably, to get obby from Piglins. Um, we just didn't wait around this time, just because the Bastion wasn't that good. But we could have mined some gold and gotten it. I think we already had about five pieces, so keep that in mind. Uh, that we do not build a portal this run, but honestly, like I don't consider that necessarily necessary for the farm. Um, obviously, in survival, you'd want to, but this is a farm speed run, so not a requirement. But we did do it when we did have the materials. And there we go. I craft up way too many ladders. I'm like, okay, it doesn't care. It doesn't matter. I'm a little worried at first that we didn't have enough blocks, but then I see I have like four stacks of blocks left. So I come up and I just start placing with gauge. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and place these dirt blocks. And what these dirt blocks are going to do is this is where we're going to put the blue fungi on that scare the hoglins into it. The way that these farms work is essentially the hoglins will spawn and you use torches to light it up to prevent piglins from spawning. So only hoglins spawn and then they're scared by the blue fungus and then they run into the center where they'll run over the trap and eventually fall into the lava. Now I actually fall off. So at this point I'm on a heart and a half. So I'm like... My horse is racing a little bit because I have no health. We gotta finish this thing. And fall damage is the reality right now. So at this point, I get 15 more iron from our furnaces. So we're down to the wire. We need three more hoppers. We're about 26 minutes in. I'm like, okay, do we have four minutes? We're close, but I think we can do it. He goes ahead, places in the blue fungi since he was the one who collected it from the warp forest. And I throw some ladders in the ground for him. And he starts just going. And he starts pillaring up. I give him all my blocks, um, more than enough to get up to the top. He has to pillar up to about 245. And now I'm just waiting for iron while he's going to send it uh, up to that spot and try to place ladders on the way. I grab some slabs because technically these are spawnable spaces, so might as well make sure no mobs spawn on them. Place some slabs. I get more iron. I need about two more pieces. We're at 13, so I just need two more. We smelt it, so I wait for it right here after I craft up those other hoppers. I get the one there, I get the fifth there, and we're done with the iron. We don't need any more, we got it all. We got a little extra, we don't know how much we're going to get from the Bastion, so I just go for the full 45, because usually it's pretty easy, but in some runs I did not get as much. Uh, I'd get like 40, because uh, I knew we'd probably get about 5 throughout. He throws the lava bucket down, that's the last thing we needed. I pillar up here. I place it right above the signs, and that will kill the hoglins. Actually, I have to bridge down a little bit. And there we go. So now at this point, I'm like, okay, we gotta get going. And I'm being very careful, very, very careful with my health at this point. Because I know I only have a heart and a half left, so I can't take much damage. So I start pillaring up. I actually fall off the ladder and take a heart of damage. Um, so I'm like, oh god. Like, oh god, we're about to be screwed. That's because I realized I actually forgot to place the torches, which is a big oof mistake on my part. So I go ahead, I run up here, and I just torch spam. Because we were at 28 minutes, we have two minutes for me to place all those ladders, place all the torches, and I actually missed some torches. So Piglins did spawn at first, but we're still counting the run. I actually missed torches on that side. Because honestly, I could have placed them. It was just a mistake in the time. Um, it still generated plenty of hoglins, only a couple piglins spawn, and it was easily fixed within five seconds. So, minor error, but this isn't being submitted to a speedrun.net, so we'll consider it okay for the purposes of this video. And at this point, it's a race against time. We got about a minute and 24 seconds left until 30 minute flat. And we're really shooting at this point. This has been the accumulation of probably five, six hours of running, which isn't a lot, but. For basically with most runs ending with me just mining iron, that kind of sucks. Um, not doing a lot. I definitely have a lot more empathy for speedrunners at this point. Not that I already didn't, but now I kind of get that grind of constantly resetting. And keep in mind, this was a filtered seed. If we had done RNG, totally RSG, random seed generation, that would have sucked. Gage is dropping white die because we are celebrating now. Because it is about 29 and 10 seconds, and I am about to be at the top. And right at this point, I get to the top, and we end the farm right here at about 29.14, I believe. So we get a great run. We beat our PB by 45 seconds. We also beat the time where we actually built the wrong biome, which honestly would have been a legit run had it been in the right biome. Um, so Gage kills me right there, and that is the end of the run. 
As you guys can see, the farm is now working. Of course, I'm in creative mode since we are done with the speedrun. If we take a look down below, we can take a look at some of the rates. We were kind of around here for just a few minutes, but if we do take a look over here, yeah, we already got several stacks of pork chops, so the farm is definitely working. We did miss some torches, as I mentioned, but I went ahead and placed this in just to make the farm actually complete, but honestly, like, the farm is still working. There's already 32 pork chops down there by the time we got back down to replace the torches, so overall, we got sub 30, guys. We did it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, sub down below. Let me know what farm you want to see me speedrun next. Also, let me know what you thought about the commentary. I would rather, you know, it be like just me engaged talking in the background. I think that'd be a little more interesting. So do let me know. Let me know what you want to see. And yeah, guys, have an easygoing day.